so you guys remember a couple of videos ago I showed you how to do the traditional Japanese mamagami and so I've got this piece of paper that I used it's just a paper bag from a grocery store and you know after you crunch it up then I took both ground espresso and vintage photo and rubbed over it but now I want a little bit more of an antique look to it so I've got this antique paste it's called antique gold uh, pen tart and let's just see what it looks like on here so I'm just going to put a little bit on this sponge and rub it across and I think that's going to, oh yeah, I like that. That's going to give it kind of a little bitty, of a, kind of a goldish, bronzy, antique look. And it just doesn't take much at all. I know you can use your fingers too, but I just thought I would just use this little uh, sponge. I think these were Stampin' Up! sponges from... From back in the day when I was a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. So I'm just running some across it. Put a little bit more in there. And I'm going to hold it up so you guys can see the difference. So that is with it. And that is without it. So I had workmen here today. They were putting up the drywall. And then they will come back tomorrow and put the, what's it called? It's not texture paste. What is that called? Not the drywall. You know, oh my gosh, you guys. I'm going crazy. Anyway, they're going to put that stuff over the drywall. Um, texture paste, basically. <laughs> and then the next day, they're going to come and paint it. So they thought, so I'm filming this on Monday. So they thought they would be completely done with the job by Thursday. And I realize as I'm putting this through here, I'm going to have the image here. So I really don't really need to put it all over it. But I do like the way it's making it look. And I, if need be, I can add more. If it's not enough once I'm done. And I've got it on my my chipboard is it no it's not stucco anyway so anyway so that's that so i'm going to set this aside and let it dry and uh we'll go from there so here is the start of the journal cover itself and I did tell you in a previous video where I used the um, Japanese traditional technique for making mamagami paper. And so the only thing I've used for the cover is a cereal box. The reason being is when I was working on this cover, I don't know if you can see, that is really thick chipboard. It, it's difficult to cut. And the cereal box was fairly easy to cut. And because this paper is so strong, it's just a paper bag with the mamagami technique on it. 
and I knew it was gonna be strong enough. Now to make these little things, all I did was take the cereal box, I measured the width of the spine, and then I cut four one half inch of these. So I laid it in my trimmer. I cut a half an inch, half an inch, half an inch, half an inch, four times, and I glued them together. And then I put them underneath this paper. I glued it down and then I used my bone folder to really crease it and make those images really stand out. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and finish gluing down the front and back cover. Like I said, I went ahead and did this. I used my bone folder to make those indentations there. So I've gone ahead and glued the back cover and the spine to the cereal box. And I just need to glue this part. Now you've heard me say this many, many times before. It is best to use something like this, a three in one glue. And I'm gonna tell you why. It's because it is a solvent as opposed to a water-based glue. Your uh, art glitter glue and the school glue are water-based. And so what they will do is warp your cardboard and your paper. This three-in-one glue doesn't do that. And actually, it, act, it, it strengthens your cardboard and your paper. So I'm gonna put quite a bit here because I am going to then use my bone folder to spread it out. So I'm gonna lay it here and then just run my hand over this so that it spreads the paper out a little bit. I'm still going to have my creases in there, but now that I've done that, on that side, I'm going to take my bone folder and really push that down. And you can actually even kind of pull the paper because it's very stretchy. And until this glue dries a little bit, it's going to lift up a tiny bit. I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna once again take my bone folder and spread that glue underneath that mamagami paper. Okay, and then now I'm gonna turn it over again. You see how that has spread out a little bit, that glue? And I actually can even take a little baby wipe and wipe some of that off. I do have a little bit here on my, my desk. So let me take this baby wipe and pick that up. 
and then I'm also gonna just run it along the side here. And then take my bone folder and once again, really press down. And then you can also bend it just to make sure that your spine can still bend. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take a couple of these clips, these binder clips, and put them on here so that it holds down my, my paper here while this dries. So after the front, back, and spine, is glued down then i miter my corners i've gone ahead and done these two sides and i'm going to do these sides and what i have for that is i had ordered this oh some time ago um, it's called color way arts it is um a miter tool and all you have to do is lay it in the corner of your book have your cutting mat underneath cut across with a craft knife and you are going to have an absolute perfect mitered corner see how that is so let's do this other side too yeah I really like this little tool and then what I will do is fold these up at the bottom and the top and I usually glue those down first you need to come in with a small pair of scissors and just do a small little snip in where your spine is going to be so I usually cut down the center first and then I come in and take off a little wedge off of both sides so it's not a ton but it's just enough so that your paper there for the front and back cover doesn't bunch up. So then what you're able to do is glue that down first and then come in and glue that. And once you put in your hidden binding, you won't be able to see that. I like doing hidden bindings because I like fabric here. So once again, I just come in, I cut to the middle of where the fold line will be for the front and spine. And I just come in and then miter it ever so slightly. Just like that. And then I will glue these two down, then these two, and last I will do that. Okay, now everything is glued down. I don't have my inside covers, but I want to work 
on my dragon eye. So I've done another prototype and I'm going to show you my process. So first of all, I pulled off some of the paper that is there and I used different colors of paint just to kind of get an idea of what they would look like. And compared to the eye, I think the greens don't work. Even that green doesn't work. This just kind of blended in too much. So this is just, you know, again, something that I do so I don't ruin the whole journal. Then I did another eye and one of my subbies had said that I had had the orientation of the eye this way. She said, have it this way. And she was absolutely correct. And then build up your eyelids this way. Then what I did is I glued down eggshells and once again, it was just to see colors. Like if you look real close, let me grab a pokey tool. This color is a darker purple than this purple. I did see some pictures of dragons that had blue mixed with it, and I didn't like that. Here's the green again, just to kind of see, and I don't think it works. So we're going to do it again. And this again is just, I will tear this apart and I will use that eye again. But I'm going to try here with you guys to do the eye once again. Now I'm going to have this over here. Now the other thing I'm going to do, I had the eye where it looked like the dragon was looking up. But I think I'm going to have the dragon looking down and then have scales come this way. So I'm going to glue the eye, I think about there. I tell you, you don't know how many hours I have spent vacillating on this. It just literally, and actually days, days, if you want to know the truth. So I, let's just, let's just go for it. So I want to make sure that I've got enough place to have the scales around it. So let's just put down our eye. Again, I think I said it before, it's only paper and glue and time. So I'm going to let that dry. Now, what I also found out is when I was working on this, in Belle's tutorial, she had used just parchment paper. But I kind of liked the thickness of this paper. So I'm going to use some of it besides the the parchment paper so i'm just going to tear some strips and i'm going to really build up this eye i will use some of the parchment paper but let's just see what this looks like and you can see here the difference i covered the eye so it wasn't completely um, completely round. Oh, and the other thing, as I looked through it, I really liked that I could see a little bit 
of gold in here. So I'm going to take some of, and it's actually more of a chocolate brown or let me, let me, now I'm going to stop the camera again because now I want to look. Do I want gold or chocolate brown? So what I've done is I have four different golds here. And this one's too yellow. That one's too light. These are similar. So I'm going to go with this glorious gold here. So let's get this out of the way before I end up getting stuff on my book. And so since most of the eye is going to be covered up, I don't need a whole lot. And I did turn that. I hope it's going to be okay. But I only need a little gold in here. No, because I want the eye to come this way. I need gold here and gold here. Boy, I sure hope I don't screw this up, you guys. <laughs> Let's just see what happens. So I want to make sure the eye goes this way. I'm just going to take a tiny bit. And I'm just going to kind of come in here. I do like this gold here. Yeah. I just think it's going to really make that eye stand out. And I don't need a heck of a lot, but I do want to make sure I get in there. Even though most of this, I bet, will be covered up, I'm still going to just kind of come around here and uh, paint it just in case. And it actually lets me know kind of where I need to put my, my, uh, my eyelids. Okay. Now I want to show you how I made the eyelids. And I just took a piece of the Mamagami paper. I tore it into um, a strip. And then I put just some Elmer's glue down it on the inside. Then I folded it in half. And what happens is the glue kind of squishes out. And you just kind of have to bend it in half. Okay. So now that's bent in half. And then I just take the paper bag that's and glue's kind of leaking out everywhere and I just kind of fold it and twist it around itself. You see how here that came undone but if I just kind of put it together that's why I really like this um, paper bag print. Um, it's it's very sturdy and then I just kind of hold it there for a minute and then lay it down on my mat and let it dry and I just kind of work with it and it will bend nicely around to make an eyelid so that's all I do. And some of them I did a little bit thicker than other ones. But then I just let that sit and dry. Now when I was working on this eye, 
I found as I was trying to glue the eyelids down, they were moving quite a bit. So what I did is I took just a small piece of double-sided tape and put it here and it's going to be hidden quite a bit so you won't even notice it but it did help with holding the eyelids in place while the glue set. So I've just got a couple of small pieces there. And then I'm going to take off the, the double-sided part. Boy, that took a hot minute. <laughs> okay, but now I'm still going to put some glue. And uh, I'm going to go with my beacons. So I'm going to come along here. And then up through there. And hopefully, that little piece of double-sided tape will hold that down until this kind of grabs. That really does help. And I'm going to stand up. Yeah. I think we're good there. And we're going to put a couple of layers of these eyelids. Need to hold this down for a minute longer. And actually, I can see that uh, double-sided tape there. So I want to push this up so that you don't see that. And then hold it in, in place. And then here, I'm just taking another piece of the paper bag that is rolled up and I'm adding it to the top layer of the eyelid. If I need to, I will cut that off. I just really want this to grab. And now I'm taking a, another piece of the paper bag and I'm going to add it to the bottom so that that then has two layers just like the top has two layers. 
So I ended up adding a third layer to the top of the eye, but I only have two layers here. And I'm gonna call it quits because the journal itself is not that big. So before I end this video, I'm going to do a layer of our eggshells for the scales so that it can dry overnight. So I'm going to just lay down some glue. and then spread it around with my, my brush here. Let's see, do I want, yeah, I'll just use this smaller brush here. And I wanna make sure that I get up underneath the eyelid. Just come down a little bit here. And then I have a thing of water and I'm just gonna start taking some of the eggshells and laying them down. And then I will press them into the glue a little bit more. And then this is also going to be painted. So don't worry about the coloring right now. And then I'm just using this little, oh, what's it called? A stylus or score, scoring thing to push down the eggshells into the glue itself. And it breaks them up. Makes them a little bit smaller. And then I will be able to see where I need to add more. thinking about coming down and around a little bit. I feel like I'm done for the night. And this is what it's going to look like. So that's the front. And of course, it will be painted. Then that will be the spine. And then that will be the back. So I'm going to let this dry tonight and then I will start laying more glue over the top so that the eggshells 
don't come off. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me for this part of my dragon journal. I'm much more pleased with this one than the previous one I worked on. So thanks so much, and I'll see you guys again soon. Thanks, and bye-bye.